Here we go. So our first map is going to be on Aztec. What do you think about this map, Evan? Okay, so uh, we casted some games on this uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's Neo Aztec, right? Even though the map isn't listed. I believe as that's Neo Aztec. Yeah, because it has that droppable uh, map. Mm -hmm. So we do have the low ground main, and as we had noted before, uh, that has a noticeable effect in uh, like a P PVT where Protoss can pressure down a ramp. But uh, ZBT, I think the it's a little less of an it's a little less of a factor. Yeah, I quite like this map, especially for PVZ. Um, the thirds, the bases, you know, do have the ramps, so it's. I definitely like playing on this map. And as far as the sort of the maps I wasn't familiar with, I was actually quite surprised at how much I enjoyed this one. But mm -hmm. our two players on this map, this is a TVZ. Our first player from Team Supply Block it is the Green Terran and the Blime. Okay. And then we've got the Teal. Zerg at the 12 o'clock. Hot Dog Water from Team Beast, our our teammate in the A team. And yeah, TVZ. We we've said it before. It's it's pretty much the classic. Uh, it's what people think of when they think StarCraft. Yeah, for sure. My favorite match, definitely. Now, Hot Dog Water, she is really cool because she started playing apparently a couple of months ago. Uh, originally an osu player this is probably all familiar to everyone but um mm -hmm. then team then beast started coaching her and his kind of his brilliance kind of exuded over onto her and she's been playing really solid tight macro games and it, it's honestly kind of hard to believe that she's only a couple months into this and it, it's really cool to see people coming in who are just this good mm -hmm. and something uh i've noticed the Something I've noticed early on is we have someone who does not spam in the early game. It's uh, refreshing if you're, if you're looking at Hot Dog Water's APM. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nablime is like 500 APM. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I definitely know Beast Coding style a little bit. He's definitely of the philosophy as far as APM, like less is more. Um, if, you're, <laughs> if you're wise with your APM, you don't need to spam. Like, uh, it's... I mean, I know some of the pros spam a little bit, but it, sometimes it can just get you off edge and m make more misclicks than it can actually help you get prepared. Yeah, yeah, it's about the effective APM in the end. I, I, I think the APM spam is just, it's it's warming up your hands, it's getting yourself uh, able to do a bunch of actions that you're going to actually have to do later in the game. But it's obviously not necessary. In the chat, I got Snoopy, one of my teammates there from Sonic Aftermath. Nice team tuning in. Okay. Saying Hot Dog Water is a funny name. I know the first time I saw it too, I was like, that's a great name. <laughs> uh huh. So, as far as builds, we got a three hatch build from Hot Dog Water. Uh, pretty standard. Uh, we've got a one racks, well, second racks under construction, but it was a one racks expand from Nublime. If, I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it. Mm -hmm. And we have the scouts still alive for the SCV inside Hot Dog Water's base. Yeah, that's a nice SCV. Um, oh, looks like it just took the first hits now. Uh, but it stayed alive for a long time. And the longer that Niblime can keep that alive, that we'll start to pay some serious dividends if he can see the tech choices here. And then Niblime will have that advantage. Now, it looks like he's moving up with a few Marines into the hot dog, base of Hot Dog Water, which he does not have a sunken yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got only a couple Zerglings uh, chasing the SCV, and that's all we've got so far for fighting units. But we do have the Marines turning around. So, it, it was a bit of a faint. Yeah, I think the Marines were seeing if they could try to catch an Overlord out there. Nice move, mm -hmm. but um, we'll return. Doesn't want to lose any more Marines, but we'll have we've been producing them constantly. We'll have a total of seven now. Yeah, and we do have the layer halfway morphed at the natural of hot dog water. Which is, you know, it's pretty common to see the layer morphed at the natural because it increases the hit points noticeably of the, uh, you know, of the hatchery. So it, if you were to get pushed 
and they would try to take it out. Makes it harder to makes it harder to kill. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And Hot Dog Water saw the um, Marine count as well, so she's gonna be prepared for this. She's still not getting any sunken. She's probably confident enough in her um, zer production timing. But you know, this is a quite a bit of Marines um, out for Nablime. So I'm wondering if he's gonna try to make something happen earlier. It might just set up into a macro game comfortably. Mm -hmm. And we've got the first fire bat and first medic in production currently. The academy had just finished. So this is a, uh, you know, the last last time we casted every single opener in the uh, TVZs we watched was uh, two racks academy. And it seems like we've got something similar. I, it's a pretty standard build. So it, it's not surprising to see it. Yeah, it's a pretty standard build um, right now, especially. But it's it's something that you know gives players an opportunity to be aggressive and push out. But it looks like Hot Dog Water is going to have a creep colony up, uh, maybe even two. The scan just went down, and there's enough lings out that if she gets a good position on these marines, she might be able to do it. Oh, she's pulling back the lings. Um... Mm -hmm. So that scan from Niblime saw the uh, that scan from Niblime saw the Hydralisk den. Uh, the first scan, and then this scan has seen the Zergle count. The stim is done, and there's a nice um, stutter step with the Marines there. Or not really a stutter step, just holding their ground, and they're stimming forward. Gonna see if they can get some of these Hydras yeah, to get hydras. one. We do have one Lurker morphing right in front. Okay, three Lurkers morphing. Oh, one Overlord is gonna go down. But we have three Lurkers mor morphing, and then we've got two finished somethings. So I'm doubting with about eight marines that he pushes into them. Blind. Yeah, if he sees the third, though, he might be able to try to wrap around and do some damage there. Now the lurkers are out, and oh, he's still moving around. Got lucky there. Um, mm -hmm. Only lost only one, one marine taken out. And so we've got yes, yeah, still we've got the evolution chamber up, and the third hatchery is up. Or the third base. Is up. Oh, big marine hit there. Lost about four or five. Mhm. Mm yeah, and we actually have uh, not a ton of marines uh, produced back here. Uh, there is the construction of one factory, but there isn't a lot of uh, marines here. We've got three medics and two marines sitting in front of the natural. So not a very high marine count at the moment. Yeah, both players have been macroing pretty decently as well, not banking a lot of minerals. Um, so, you know, this is an A team macro. So these players, they're just certainly at a, they're definitely at um, a certain level of macro here. Now, the starport is just being started for an oblime. So his science vessels are quite a ways away. And with the lurkers out on the map, he only has, he has a finite number of scans. So I'm a little <laughs> bit worried for him here. Hold position lurkers are really good. So if Nablime wants to get anything done with this, little force of bio, he's got to be so careful he doesn't walk into whole position lurkers, and then the game can seesaw back and hit him really hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we actually have two lurkers morphing right on the ramp. What do we have here? We have a scan of the... I missed what that scan was of. But uh, he is heading up towards the natural. He scanned the... Uh, prior to this, he had scanned the lair. Catch, see if there's any tech around there. Catching a few hydras here, but he really cannot fight up there. The, that number of lurkers and three sunkens is just too much. And th yeah. this is the thing about Neo-Aztec. The third for Zerg, once they get two whole position lurkers up there, or not even whole position, just lurkers up there, period, it's impossible to dive up that ramp until you have mech. So this is a mm -hmm. map that I think Zerg's really comfortable on once they establish the third. If Nablime was able to deny that th third a little bit, it might be a different story. But Hot Dog Water is already significantly ahead because this Bioforce is doing nothing, just mm -hmm. being whittled away, and the third's not Ooh, even started. Got, and we've got a couple Marines taken out already. Yeah, we've got about we've got more Lurkers here than Marines. Yeah. So that's usually uh, pretty rough for the Terran. Uh, so losing five Medics is pretty rough. He's got a army heading over to the left side of the map. He has not scouted at all the area that Hot Dog Water has for third. He's got a little uh, force of bio up there, 
and I'm really worried because Nablime's third's not even started here. The timing of the third is late for him, and this Bioforce is quickly becoming outmoded with no science vessels out. I think he's been producing uh -huh. dropships. The, the science vessels just now being produced. Science vessels are late, and this force of Lurker Ling diving to the net might actually be able to get in position uncontested. Yeah, uh, luckily that is the second bunker. He has another bunker behind us, but still, this is doing a lot of damage. Really just, uh, you know, we're equal supply in the TBZ at this point. So that's usually not a great sign. Looks like he's simming forward, getting the lurkers decent so he does there. pick. He does pick out, pick out a couple lurkers that are efficiently, but that last spine was a great spine from that final lurker. Able to take out three marines. And the marine count is just so low here. This is, like, it, it, there's barely any standing army. We have a vessel and a dropship and six marines. So, there's not much you can do with that army at this point. Yeah, he's going to try to land a attack, maybe a drop on this third, which I like the idea of it. Um, if he picks in, can get a few drones. Well, there's one overlord spotting. So, at the very least, he may be able to get an overlord if he's careful with it. And finally, the third is being started over on this side. So if he gets a good drop here, he might be able to get himself back in as far as economically. But mm -hmm. the supply is even, and an even supply in a TVZ is Ooh, a really bad thing. Ooh, and a drone scouts the dropship. Drones gets the dropship before it unloads. Yeah, We're actually seeing Lurkers on Burrowed. Lurkers on Burrowed, they're going to be denying this, although he's going to pick up, only lose one Marine. So he's smart here, he's not dumping this army away. And, and he's actually going to send it into the main. He's gonna defense drop behind the wise, mines. Defense wise, there's nothing here. Well, but oh, a bunch of lurkers and hydralis spawn immediately. But we are gonna see some drone losses. Yeah, this is actually a decent position for the marines, but he's just gonna forfeit that whole dropship. Got a few drones. Yeah, efficient, efficient, but not uh, quite what he needs at this point. And you see the morphing of those damaged hydralisks. That is very good. Actually, doesn't lose any of the hydralisks. Two of them were heavily damaged, but they were morphed into lurker eggs before they were killed. That's makes me think of uh, effort. <laughs> yeah, Hot Dog Water, her individual unit micro is really um, top notch. She uses her APM, the 300, she usually hovers around 300 APM, even when I'm watching her practice. She uses that all extremely well, and sometimes you're really is hard to understand how she can control every unit like that but she get, makes it happen and she really it's not often that she loses units for free right now and the blime he's still trying to make this bio work but bio just doesn't work and honestly he's moving up here with the science vessels and their radiates are good but he doesn't have enough of a big bio ball to even get anything done We've got more Marines in the main actually doing a really good job mm. taking out drones. They've taken out five or six already. So this is very efficient. These The drops have been efficient, but they haven't quite made up for the early game uh, deficit that he found himself in. However, if we mm. do see him take this ramp, this is actually very well done right now. Although we do have Dark Swarm, and he can't do anything after that. Yeah, However, was... the marines behind the minerals, this is kind of where you see the difference between an A team and an B e team player. Splitting off a couple of uh, marines and getting these very, uh, very efficient trades with these marines. This has been incredible economic damage from groups of about two and four marines at the main base and the uh, third base, where they've killed about 12 drones between the two of them. Oh my goodness, the slaughter here. These medics in the low ground, this is just terrible to watch. And, yeah, the one thing is Neblime has been pretty good with what he's had. But the fourth from Hot Dog Water is up, and she's really in a comfortable position. The third's just getting up. Um, SCVs are just transferring. So ne Neblime's going to need to be more than just efficient in this trade. So he's going to have to, at a certain point, be able to prepare for the long game of how is he going to fight that many lurkers with Dark Swarm and Plague. And that comes, the answer for Terran is mech, but uh, Neblime's just not at that position right now where he can mm -hmm. make that switch. Yeah, well, he's going SK. 
So the the science vessels can uh, deal with that with proper irradiates of the gas units. Like you see him, he's doing a good job irradiating a lot of lurkers. But uh, it's okay. We have a plague. Only hits a couple vessels. But the control that he has over these vessels is what's going to make or break this playstyle for him. Decent lurkers it's actually by very splitting. efficient. Very efficient play here. So many lurkers going down for not very much army. And like we've said, for the financial, uh, for the oh, but we do have a couple vessels going down to hydras. Uh, for the economic situation he's found himself in for most of this game, uh, economically behind, he's traded very well over the last five or so minutes with small, much smaller armies in general. Yeah, and I mean, efficiency of the vessels. He he killed as many lurkers there as he probably physically could have with that group of marines. But a four base zerg um, is not is you know, Nablaim actually is doing decent with this um, this cloud of science vessels. But mm -hmm. at a certain point, the hive tech for zerg is really scary, and I think hot dog water is in the transitioning into the mode now where she's going to slowly whittle him down. Mm hmm. Yeah, there comes a certain point where, even if you're trading efficiently, if you're so far behind economically, uh, you know, you can't make up for all of it. When we have Scourge finally coming in, finally uh, one vessel taken down in one uh, dropship, I believe. We have a lot of dropships out, four sitting in front of the natural and one heading out across the map. But if you just look at the vision on the map, okay, we do have a couple, we have a marine to the right and SUV to the left, but uh, generally, you don't really have, okay, you, you do, you have Nibelheim pushing through the middle of the map, but prior to that, he had almost no presence on the map. Yeah, this is a little group of bio here, but there's no detection with it, he's got to be really careful he doesn't lose that to some lurkers. Um, in the chat, Scuzzy's asking who are casters. Um, I am Gorgonoth, and uh, my co-caster. I co -caster. am Avenhoek. Yep. Or Avenhoek, you pronounce however you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nibelheim, his science vessels, yeah, didn't actually lose too many of them. I just... Ooh. Ooh, but we've got large groups of that uh, lurker spines taking out the lar vast majority of that uh, bio group to the... Uh, upper left going down to lurker spines yeah that's the thing when he doesn't didn't bring a science vessel with that and ooh, and we've got the dark swarm on the third base for Terran and that is just so difficult you can't hold that losing a decent amount of SCVs here this is hurting him so much he's had to produce a ton of fire bats now the thing yeah the fire bats are good for, against the lings but they're they're not a great unit long term Mm hmm Yeah, if you ever if you ever see um but what other answer does he have to the Dark Swarm at this point? He ha he has to have some splash damage because he's not producing tanks. Yeah, so it's, it's really true. his only answers are radiate and fire bats. Yeah, fire bats are a good desperation move for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, with with good micro and uh, for example, you can see um defense matrix of fire bats and things like that where you can get efficient and take out lurkers or defilers and large amounts of zerglings but it's it's just tough to only rely on that and there's fleets of scourge moving around if he gets any serious connections on these science vessels there's about six up now they don't have a ton oh. of mana one drop ship going down in the middle of the map and you just see these streams of zerglings. Streams of zerglings. There's scourge. a huge drop in the gnat, and it's doing decent. It took out one of the nidises and getting a huge group of drones, but at this point, yeah, doing mm -hmm. really good. And just, um, targeting the lair instead of the drones, which is a bit of a mistake there. The lair going down, the hive, excuse me, would not be that, you know, would take so long to rule that down that that's a mistake. But clean that up, got a few drones for that at least, and now he's pushing out with a decent bio ball. He's managed to pull about 20 supply ahead of hot dog water, 
So as long as he doesn't Ooh, eat as many lurker spines, position. he might be able to make something work. We had a hold position lurker. Took out a decent amount. Oh, we've got Scourge take all taken out before they can hit any vessels. And so, yeah, really it comes down to, when you're playing this style, it comes down to the vessel control, keeping your vessels alive and irradiating, irradiating over and over again. Uh, taking out those valuable gas units for the Zerg. But the Zerg is on four gases. They've been on four gases for a long time. So it's just very difficult. There's no Defiler at this fourth base. So... Ooh, the Scourge is popping, and they didn't detonate on the closest one. Looks like they'll, oh, get a few. Two vessels go down. I think but there those is were... no Defiler here. Yeah, those were the ones with the most energy, but the Marines charging forward, and they might get this base. There was one Nidus, but... They take out the Nidus quickly. Yeah, that was but nice. But we do have a counterattack into the natural of, uh, of Nibline, but there's a group of Bio here. So actually, that was very well done. It, it, you know, no defiler at a base. Uh, can oh, the uh, hot dog water just bled a defiler. That's pretty huge. Her control is slipping a little bit now, even, and it at looks the, like she finally might get the fourth up. At the former third base and now fourth base of Nablime, we actually had four Marines hold off an entire group of Zerglings by hiding behind a group of SCVs. Uh, it was a little interest, bit, interesting bit of micro. And now from Hot Dog Water, we have the Ultras coming out, and there's not a ton to answer this. Wow. We'll see what he does. Now the Irradiates are good. Ultras. But remember, if they can get on top of any bio, then they are going to do Irradiate Splash damage. Yeah, honestly, the, that Ultra timing, I don't think that's the best. Uh, losing a lot of those, and they're getting really weak. Um, the plagues are decent on the science, on a few science vessels, but it's kind of just a trickle, trickle in here, and I don't know if that was yeah. the best use of those ultras. Yeah, it seemed, uh, rather inefficient, uh, because they didn't really have any other unit support. And, you know, ultras by themselves, they're fine units, but they're not as powerful as when they're surrounded by lurkers and lings and defilers. That's when they really become incredibly tough to deal with. If there was a dark swarm in the middle of that, uh, on top of that bunker, then all of a sudden you're seeing 5-2 Ultras that can't be damaged. Yeah, and no. we're seeing a lot of fire bats come out, but like we've said before, uh, specifically against Ultras, fire bats are not that good. Yeah, and they can end up uh, damaging a lot of their own units. So many SCVs going down there, that was huge. Yeah, we've got so many going down. And these are irradiated Ultras doing splash damage to these SCVs that are fighting. SCVs fighting Ultralisks and continuing to fight. Yeah, I think Hot Dog Water defended that first wave of Ultras, but there wasn't enough gas in the tank to really get him get enough rounds of production out to fight that. Um, he just started mm -hmm. to mine at the fourth, so he's really struggling here to mine at all. And it's We actually showing. are going to have, if they don't lift off, the third, oh, he leaves it. He doesn't keep attacking it. The third uh, uh, command center, it's on 60 health. But there are lurkers Ooh. right here, taking out almost all the SCVs. Oh, and he inf she infests. She infests the third. Oh, that is funny. The blime. <laughs> so uh, I, I thought that uh, she had made a mistake in not uh, uh, finishing off the command center, but it was a purposeful move. And we've got GG. Yeah, well played from, the, actually both players, their control was really solid, you know, an A-team matchup. Uh, Hot Dog Water pulled it out, and but that was a, honestly a close game. Nablime kept Hot Dog Water honest, uh, did, did really good harass, but wasn't quite able to pull off the tricky SK Terran style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the trickiness, yeah, there was a definite, uh, I felt... A key point in that game was uh, when the blind was able to take out that fourth base. I thought there was some potential there, you know, because he had he had gotten uh, hot dog water down to three bases uh, because of the lack of defiler at that fourth. But then those ultras, like we said, they didn't seem very efficient at first. But that ultra attack with a little bit of lurker uh, support just killed so many SCVs, and then there was no defense at either the third or fourth base for the Terran. So, when once you lose, it you get your third 
uh, CC infested and your fourth CC's near undefended, all of a sudden you're gonna have no mining. So Nablaim decided to GG at that point. Yeah, I'm not sure there was a lot he could do with that. And so map two for week three was crossing fields. Um, another interesting map, a uh, newer map, uh, of course, yeah. that season of ASL. Mm -hmm. Season four of ASL chosen by the uh, community vote. It had not been seen, you know, I, no one had heard of it before prior to that. But uh, yeah, this this should be interesting for TVZ. Yeah, it's a fun oh. map. I like it a lot. Um, I I think I like the pocket maps, the pocket expansions. I think it leads to more macro games, and on TVZ, it's super fun. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to talk about once we had gotten into the game. But so in the uh, bottom right, crossing field, two player map, so they know where their opponent is spawned. In the bottom right, our yellow Terran is in the blind. And for Team Beast. It's hot dog water as the purple zerg and the opposing side of crossing fields. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you already mentioned it. The pocket expand to the bottom, uh, bottom right or top left is what sort of the interesting feature of this map. And by pocket expand, we're just meaning that it's a base that is very easily defendable, sort of in the back area of the base. That pretty much allows a you know, it gives a Zerg a third gas. Limited limited gas supply, but it gives a Zerg a third gas, which means you don't need to see the uh, lurkers on the ramp defending the third. And it means that you can't really push the push and take out the vital third gas for the Zerg uh, right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's is only two thousand Vespine as opposed to the five thousand in the main and standard bases. Mm -hmm. Which means obviously they do, the uh, if you take that base, then you do have to expand out and get another gas relatively quickly. But the two thousand gas is still quite useful because usually when you'd see you know easy to take third bases, a lot of the time it would be mineral only type bases. Yeah. This gives you the limited gas, allows you to get your, you know, your additional tech to allow you to secure that, uh, like, fourth gas. Mm, it is that style of map that does lend to the macro games, um, especially in some other matchups. PVZ comes to mind a lot. And uh, I, I don't, we're seeing just a um, Rax expand or uh, not, go, not going CC uh, first. Pool from Hot Dog Water. It is scouted by Nablime, and there are going to be six lanes coming out of this, but the SEV will see it. There will be plenty of time to react. So how do you feel about this going six lanes, even though you see the scout? Yeah, we actually have more lanes being built afterwards. Um, yeah, you see the scout, but you've committed to the uh, early pool. So I think you have to, and committed to the early gas, which means, you know, it, it's it's a very aggressive build. And we're going to see SCVs attempt to block this off. The barracks is not yet finished, so it's not going to be easy. But uh, it will come down to the micro by Nablon. Yeah, the barracks just going to be finishing now, and it's going to start marine production right Ooh, away. Let's see. Let's see. We've got the Zerglings coming up the ramp. The mass repair has started just in time. SCV is repairing that one depot. Marine is coming out soon. Who loses one SCV? Oh. This is not tight. Oh, that was not a tight wall, Avin. That was insane. <laughs> I was thinking that he, he needed an SCV blocking between that barracks and the uh, the little doodad. But uh, obviously he didn't think that that was an area where it could go through. I, I immediately was sort of thinking that. I was thinking, hey... Don't let the Zerglings run by your... I thought that's why he had the SCV there. It but... was, but then it died, and then you had no backup plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's where... In that position, I'm thinking that you've got a couple SCVs sitting right there in that gap. Because that seems like the only place the things can get through. But <laughs> obviously, obviously, that was not what was intended from the blind. So... 
Yeah, they're pretty straightforward. Tough uh, loss for him, though. Yeah, quick zergling speed build. Or actually, it was into a lair, lair into a second hatchery. So, but obviously, it was a very aggressive build, and it paid off. I was actually kind of disappointed. I was hoping for uh, another um, TVZ macro tree, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> hot dog water. Well, I guess for our team, Team Beast, rooting for them, but. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, but you were hoping to cast a uh, longer TVZ on a what is generally considered, you know, a pretty macro map. You don't really see a ton of, uh, in my experience from watching, you don't see a ton of cheese on that map. But mixing it in, in best of threes, you know, we weren't expecting it. So that's when cheese is most effective. Yeah, that's um. This is kind of how the map pools were set up. There's usually one map, like the first two maps. There's usually one standard map. One map, maybe a little people are not comfortable with. Um, and there's usually there's usually I'd say always a map that is cheesable, something gimmicky. I mean, most maps you can, but there's some that mm -hmm. do lend that match point. Other, you know, tighter maps. Yeah, yeah, match point definitely. I would say has a bit more of a cheesier reputation. Uh, but cr yeah, like I said, crossing field usually with that easy third base, it lends itself to macro games. But not in that situation. <laughs> yeah, hot dog water defying the standard there, breaking out of the mold.